What's up beatmakers, Bassclef here with another Ableton tutorial for you and today we're going to take a look at the Channel EQ. This came out with Ableton 10. You might wonder why do we need another EQ if we already had the EQ8 and this one seems like it does less, right? Well, there's something special about it that I want to show you. So I'm going to show you how to use it, what's so special and why I think you should use it even more than the EQ8. Let's jump into Ableton. Okay, here's our channel EQ. Let's start going through some of the parameters and I'm gonna explain why I think they're special, well thought out and very musical. Let's start with the high pass filter over here. It's a simple just switch on or off. Set at 80 Hertz, which is very sensible because too many people raise their high pass filter too high. They'll bring it up into 150, 200 and pull all the power out of their vocals and leads and things. 80 is plenty. That's, I hardly ever high pass stuff higher than that. Now let's continue on to our three band EQ here. And it looks kind of basic, uh, but there's something special happening. With our low shelf, we can boost up and down up to 15 dB. But you might notice when I boost it up or, or cut it down, the cutoff frequency changes. So the cutoff frequency when boosting is around 100 Hertz. Really emphasizing that low end, but when I cut, the cutoff frequency comes up higher and pulls out a bit more of the low mids. Now this is really clever because they're the two kind of ways you'd often wanting to be boosting or cutting things. You don't even have to think about it. You just turn the knob and it does what you would be hoping it to do. Okay, let's take a look at the high shelf over here. Now this one is gonna boost and cut 15 dB as well, but again, it does something different. So when you're cutting with it, you get this low shelf, but it's also combined with a low pass filter. And the cutoff of it, you can kind of see the low pass filter coming in there. The cutoff of it progressively gets lower and lower. It gets from 20K down to 8K. So you can almost use that like a low pass filter and really get that, that top end kind of airy, sizzly stuff that might not be in there, it might not be wanted in there sometimes, can all be taken out quickly and easily with one control. And you got a nice gentle boost up to 15 dB this way too. Okay, then you got your mid band, which is a parametric EQ. You can't change the width of it, but it's a, it's a good shape, it's a good bandwidth anyway. And this one will boost up or down 12 dB. I kind of like that the preset frequency for it is 1.5K, very general thing you'd often be looking at in your mid-range, but you can sweep that all the way up to 7.5 and all the way down to 120 hertz. So it's quite flexible. On top of that, you still got an output volume too, so you can um, balance the overall volume of the EQ so when you're turning it on and off, it stays the same volume for unity gain. So there you go, the new channel EQ. You might still be wondering what's so special? It seems a little bit limited, but that is what's special. Because a lot of these modern EQs do a little bit too much. And unless you are really comfortable with EQ and really experienced, I notice way too many students making way too many adjustments that are way too fine and surgical. They get sucked into the micro, you know, and they're making these little detail adjustments and they're missing the broader picture. And stronger, bigger, more powerful, warmer EQ comes from these simple, broader decisions, taking a step back and thinking more about the mix as a whole, rather than making an EQ adjustment kind of like this. We want something a little bit more broad and musical. And musical is exactly what the channel EQ is. It'd probably even work quite well as a mastering EQ too, because you don't want to do too much on your master bus either. You shouldn't really be boosting or cutting more than 3 dB. And anything more than that, you should adjust things on the channels of your mix down, rather than trying to fix it on the mix. All right, if you liked the video today, guys, please remember to hit like, subscribe, and the bell icon so you get notified each time I post another video. Uh, to help you out even more, I've put together a special EQ cheat sheet with a bunch of info about my most commonly used frequencies and why I EQ there and on what instruments and when. You can download that just here. And if you're looking for more downloads, just head to bassclef.com. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Happy mixing, guys. Now look, I've got other EQs that I love from third-party companies, but my honest advice, if you're just starting out or if you're unsure in any way about EQ, 
this is good enough, this is fine. I could completely mix down tracks with this and it would be fine. Those expensive third-party EQs I've got, they only really add an extra five or 10% betterness at the most. This is great. So I love how musical it is, how simple it is, how much more I think it's gonna make everybody listen rather than look at the picture on the screen, which is really important. So, who is the channel EQ for? Well, beginners, producers that have been producing for less than say two years, people that would rather be spending more time writing music than mixing, and people that have spent too much time on their mixing and get bogged down in endless tweaking, you're probably gonna benefit a lot from a more musical, simple EQ, and honestly, it really does enough. You don't really need more than this. Now you could go out and you could buy and try every other EQ out there, but there isn't gonna be one single EQ that simply by purchasing it or adding it to your setup is gonna completely change your mix downs. It's the settings you make with your EQ. So even a simple EQ like the channel EQ like this can pull that off. And the fact that it's so simplified means you can take a step back listen and think about the broader picture of your mix down and make better decisions rather than focusing on the micro and the details. Think about the music and do a better mix down. A lot of the most famous old mixing desks only have three band EQs on them anyway. So why do we need these eight band, 16 band EQs? It just makes you think, oh, I've got all these bands, I better use them. It's not the case. Trust me, less is more.